What's going on? It's Coach Williams, and I am back for another breakdown. So today, we are going to talk Marcellus Dial, cornerback, coming out of South Carolina, drafted by the New England Patriots. I know that there are a lot of New England Patriots fans on the channel, and I'm a DB guy, so I had to break this guy down. He's a six-round pick. So you guys know that I do the, the grades and the scores. I'll give you the grade at the end of the video. Uh, but one thing I wanted to say before we start talking about the film, his production grade for me is really high. Uh, you know how I do the production grades. Uh, I just want to do a little reminder. I want to see 25 or more career plays on the ball. So that's interceptions, pass deflections, and then also I put in the forced fumbles and fumble recoveries. So I want to see that on-ball production from corners. So 25 is the elite status. I believe he had 31, <laughs> right? So he's in that elite tier. And I also do take into account the level of competition. So, uh, you know, Quinion Mitchell's plays on the ball were like, it's, it was insane. It was something like 50. But I gave him a little bit of a notch down since he wasn't playing against elite competition. So he was just one notch below elite for me. This guy is in the elite status. He did it in the SEC. So we are going to break it down. So first play here. We got him out here. We've got this bunch set out of empty. And so we got him at the bottom of the screen here. And so one thing that does come up with him is the stock blocks so when he's on the perimeter and he's dealing with blocks his technique isn't that great so you can see here he's showing his numbers to the sideline you want to try to keep your outside half free and try to squeeze the block down now i know this is a tight end so that's going to be really hard to control a tight end with one arm but you compound the problem by turning your numbers to the sideline like this and so luckily somebody else comes up here and makes a play but he creates an alley Okay, so he creates an alley. We want to make sure that we stay square to the line of scrimmage. And so we'll be able to see it from this angle as well. We want to stay square. Keep that outside half free. Don't show your numbers to the sideline like this. So it's not all bad. We'll see some reps where he does it well. We'll see some reps where he doesn't do it well. But it's just something that you want to see with a little bit more consistency. All right, so next play here. We got him here at the bottom of the screen here. And so this rep I really, really like, and it's really important for the New England Patriots that he is able to do this. So this play right here, they're running the ball here. And so the receiver is coming downhill and going to crack the safety. All right, his responsibility is to take on the safety, take him out of the play. And so the corner, what the corner has to do is a crack replace. So when I always coach my corners on this, I always say, you want to come right off the backside of this guy who's trying to set the block. So we got to call out crack, crack, crack. So the safety knows this guy's trying to come to block him. And then when we fill, we don't want there to be any daylight between us and the receiver because the receiver is creating that gap. And he does a really good job here of coming right here, getting in here, getting the tackle and making the play here. And so the one thing, though, the one critique that I do have on this play is that he cracks and he replaces, but I don't see anything that tells me that he communicated that. Usually you'll see somebody's hands waving or something like that or pointing at the crack block. So it's important to get that aspect of, to it as well, because if the safety doesn't do it, he could get really hurt. He could get ear holed by that receiver. So you want to make sure that you communicate the crack, but the technique and the angles were perfect on this play. So really good job here from Marcellus Dial. We'll be able to see it from the tight angle as well. He shows up in the picture. Really good job. Look at this. No daylight in here. Gets in here and makes a tackle. That's a great job by him. So crack replace. That, that happens a lot with the Patriots too because the Patriots are a heavy man-to-man -man coverage team. And so it's hard to crack replace when you're in man coverage because you're supposed to stick with your receiver. So having a feel and being able to read the tempo of that receiver and the body language of him to know, okay, this is a run play. 
really important in the Patriots defense. I've done some breakdowns in the past where there's been some corners that have not done that well, and it's led to really big plays in the run game. So I'm sure that when Gerard Mayo was watching that clip, he was like, yeah, this guy's going to fit in pretty well. All right, so next play here. All right, so the big issue with him, okay? Big issue with Dial is the change of direction is not very good. Um, you could see it on uh, the RAS scores that Kent Lee Platt or Math Bomb puts up on Twitter. Um, the RAS scores for him in the agility section were really, really, really bad. Uh, and so when I was watching him on tape, I was like, oh, he looks like he's like a decent mover. It doesn't look like he'd be that slow. But the beauty of me doing the in-game analytics and sharing it with you guys and timing this stuff, it really times out that it's pretty slow. Um, and we've done this with the other corners. You're going to notice these numbers are way slower than all the other guys. So this play right here. So remember, what we do is we measure from when the receiver sticks that foot in the ground. How long does it take for you to get one yard of separation and one yard downhill? And so we can see Pierce Hall sticks that foot in the ground. And so look at how wide his base is. As a corner, you never want to play with a wide base like this because you can't move. His, his legs are way too wide. And so also when you're wide like that, you're not able to explode out of your break. You want to keep your base a little bit more narrow so that you can make that first step big and explosive, right? So his base is way too wide here. It takes him too long to get out of the break. But the quarterback, if the quarterback was a better quarterback, he would have anticipated this and be able to throw this ball. So if he threw this ball with a little bit of anticipation with the guy in his face, he would have been able to complete the pass. Um, but doesn't isn't able to do it. he's got a rusher in his face happens a little bit too fast for him uh but either way the recovery here is really good and this is one thing that you're going to notice on tape with him he stays attached to routes and ends up in a dominant position a lot of the time down the field ends up in phase pretty consistently so that 0. 0.767 is pretty slow for for what we've been measuring with the other guys but either way look at how attached he is to the route all over it Really good job. Physical, too, trying to push him out of bounds so that the quarterback definitely can't throw him the ball. It's a really good job right there. All right, so this was a good game to be able to break down, as we'll see over the course of it, because he's going up against an NFL receiver. He's going up against Pearsall. So. All right, the next issue that I have with him is the press technique. And you can see here right off the bat, this is a false step, right? So false step, steps forward, and then that just gets you totally out of rhythm with your press technique okay so read steps are good we want to do good read steps but look at how wide again look how wide his base gets he gets a really wide base and you can contrast that with the corner up here corner up here is nice and tight and that gives you the ability to be able to break in any direction that you want to with this wide base like this it's really hard to move okay so also he's hopping a little bit and then you can see this will show up over the course of the video as well He's leaning, so he's a little off balance here. His balance is all over the place, and then you can see it at the top of the route. Look at that. Look at his body position here. He's just kind of all over the place, and we can see really long time to get a yard downhill when the route has been declared. 1.2 seconds. That's by far the slowest time that I've tracked over the course of the draft. So really tough here. We want to see better body control. And I think maybe if you clean up the press technique a little bit, it'll improve. But, you know, some of it is just natural. You know, there's there's only improvement that's going to happen to a certain level. Um, that athletic ability is really just a natural thing. And I, I think his feet, his feet for a corner are not not up to par. All right. So this one, I didn't use this one as uh, one of the ones where. I measure the break because, like I said before, I like to measure when the receiver sticks that foot in the ground. And this is just a simple slide route from the back. So you can't really measure that. But also, I don't know. I'm not in their film room. And this play is really hard to figure out what the coverage is definitively. Um, but we'll see a clip later that makes me think I'm right on this one. I think this is cover three. And the reason why this one is a little bit challenging is because the formation is compressed, right? It's a tight formation. So when you get tight formations, you have to adjust and every team's adjustments are different. But I think that this is a cover three play. 
uh, because you're getting a corner blitz. Typically, you're not going to do a corner blitz in like cover two. Definitely not in quarters. Some people that like to roll the dice, they'll do it in cover two. Uh, but then you look at the position of the safeties. We got the safety deep in the middle of the field. And then this safety is tighter here, but it's because the formation is condensed. So I think that this is cover three. And if it's cover three, he should be getting back to the deep third. And then you can see here, this corner route ends up being wide open. Quarterback doesn't do a very good job of just being patient and throwing that corner out with anticipation here. So who knows? I don't know. I'm not in their film room, but to me, this looks like a busted coverage. So, but they throw the ball to the back in the flat. Didn't measure it because I don't think it's fair to be able to measure this one, but he gets downhill, uh, back, bobbles the ball, ends up being an incompletion. And I like this. And I know Gerard Mayo is going to like this one right here. A little something to remember me by, even though you didn't catch the ball, right? You know, toe the line a little bit with the rules, okay? Toe the line a little bit with the rules. Get in here. Let this guy know I'm going to be here all day. A little shoulder check. And then you can even see the referee at the end go up to him and be like, oh, come on now, chill out, chill out. But we got to play with that level of intensity. I am sure that Gerard Mayo liked that one right there. All right, so we got him down here, bottom of the screen, press technique again. Okay, so a little bit of a false step here, um, but it's not a big one. So I'm fine with this one because it's not a massive. Ooh, whoops, Ooh, got a little lost there. Let's get see if we can find our spot again. All right, this is it. So, right, a little bit of a false step here. Not as bad, though, right? And so he's all over this one, but he does jam with the wrong hand here, okay? So you want to make sure that you're jamming with the opposite hand, jams with the wrong hand here, and that leaves him behind. And although he's not covering this one, right, and although the ball's not thrown here, you know, it, it just leads to some open space, some separation here. You know, he's got to clean up the press technique, got to put it all together, the eyes, the feet, the hands, all that stuff, the read steps, so he's a bit of a project in press man-to-man -man coverage. He's just he's just living off athletic ability at this point. <laughs> so, all right, another thing that I've noticed here with him a little bit. So this is the one that makes me think it's cover three because you can see up top this corner is blitzing and then we're getting this three deep structure here. So on this play here, okay, so he's doing press bail and so he's, he's tipping the coverage here. Okay. So he's tipping that he's going to bail. And the whole point of doing a press bail is to mess around with the uh, route conversion, right? So, you know, if the route is going to convert and in the NFL, they convert routes all the time. So the route is going to convert. If you press bail, they're going to want to run a hitch, right? So if you're off, they're going to want to run a hitch or some other kind of like quick game concept or whatever. Or maybe if it's a deeper one, they might run a comeback. Either way, they want to have a route conversion for uh, what the corner is doing. And so he is tipping the hand that he's going to bail out. You usually want to stay up here, stay square, and then bail on the snap and get to your spot. Or you just play off and just show that you're off because this leaves you in no man's land, okay? So your cushion is already broken. Cushion's already being eaten up. And now you got to get in a position where you're sprinting and this guy is even with you. In the NFL, this is not a position you want to be in. Like, Got to do a better job on the press bail on that. So it is what it is. But I have seen that a few times on tape watching him. All right, so we got him at the bottom of the screen here. Okay, so if we back this up and we watch his feet again. We back this up. Better, okay, better. This is better technique here because there's not the false steps. His base isn't nearly as wide as it's been on some of the other plays. But either way, jams with the wrong hand again, right? And the receiver loses balance on this one. And then... He's in a position to cover, but either way, we just want to be a little bit cleaner, but I do like the physicality at the top of the route, and I do like his eyes. I like that his eyes end up in the right place. All right, next play. I keep having to move this all over the place because he's always at the bottom of the screen. All right, again, much more patient. Read steps here. The steps aren't... Uh, so we can see, right, the first step. Look at that first read step. Good read step here. Just nice and patient. 
okay? But again, his base is a little bit wider. We got to narrow that base down. And then hands-on, I like that he gets hands-on at the top of the route, but the balance becomes an issue, and we're going to see this a few more times on the video, right? So he's just got to put it together. You know, it's kind of like sometimes it just feels like he's playing with, like, two left feet, right? And we know that typically, you know, Patriots corners have really good, efficient feet uh, as DBs. So that's something that they're going to have to drill with him. Mike Pellegrino is going to be working with this guy pretty consistently. All right, so top of the screen. So we got him again, press coverage. And so, again, the steps are kind of big here. The good first read step, but you want to keep your hips and shoulders square. You're not getting that hard inside release yet. You want to react. You don't want to guess here. So he opens his hips up. But either way, that ends, that's what the route ends up being. And he's on it. And we've got a nice little mini bracket here. So, you know, this might feel like nitpicking. But in the NFL, you got to play with your technique properly. All right, see, again, look at this. Really good read step here. Right? Not getting outside of his frame, not widening his base and everything. Really good read step, patient, and now he opens up, and you're not going to be able to get a hand on him because he takes a nice wide release, but either way, gets in position, and then what does he do at the end of the rep? Cutoff technique. Perfect cutoff here. Good position to be in. That's good. That's good. That's what we want to see. So, you know, he can work this stuff. He can get better at it, but he's just not, not consistent enough yet. All right, off coverage here, cover three. All right, so this rep is one that can get you a little excited, <laughs> okay? So I'm, gonna give, I'm not going to give you my final verdict, but this uh, rep is going to tell you what I think the direction that he can go in playing in the NFL will be, okay? So he's in off coverage here, cover three again, okay? So here he does this quick hip flip here, okay? Quick hip flip because he's getting this route here. Right. So he probably should want to get a little bit more depth because this thing can break back to the corner and it does break back to the corner. But what does he do to get there? Speed turn. OK, so if we go back and we watch this, if we just watch him here. OK, I'm getting up quick flip up oh, routes coming behind me. Quick uh, speed turn. Get back there. Right. That shows even though his feet aren't really good. His body control and his hips are really, really good. I really like this in off coverage here. This is just very smooth. This is a very smooth rep, smooth recovery here, able to get in position. That rep right there looks like a combine safety drill. That's the kind of hips that you want to see from your free safety. Patriots haven't had a free safety that's been consistent since they've lost McCourty. We'll go over the rest of the film, but to me, I think that this guy could be a really good free safety. Okay. So that body control right there is really good. And we'll see it from this angle even better. So we can see here, we, we don't get the, the hip flip on this one, but we do get the speed turn, gets the head back around. And so I've been measuring the speed turns, but since there were so many moving parts, I didn't want to measure that one. And also there was two routes breaking, so it's like kind of hard to like measure. So I didn't want to measure it, but really good, impressive rep here. Really good, impressive rep. So it ends up being a completion, kind of a blown coverage because he should have you know stayed to his deep third, but either way, that shows me, you know, there's something there. All right, so on this one, red zone, we're going to get the spear concept. And so what do I always say on the channel? One of the hardest things you're going to have to do as a corner, go across the field with the receivers. So we get spear. He's going to have to go across the field with this guy. Quarterback throws it. So he's in recovery mode, gets in there, gets a hand in, and the receiver just catches it. So I'm not going to. I'm not going to kill him for this one because the recovery speed to me was impressive. Okay. So he's beat by alignment, beat by leverage. He's behind, has to recover. And then I love this here. Get in here, strike with the opposite hand, tackle insurance, even though it's in the end zone. Good job. Good technique. That just shows you he's robotic with the technique here. And so we'll see it from this angle. There's so much space. There's so much ground that he has to recover. The receiver does a good job of using the ref as a pick. But the one nitpick that I have with this rep is he's going to get there and make this play if he doesn't look back. You can see he's looking back at the ball, 
If he just stays on the path and keeps looking at the receiver, dig, 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 then try to get in there, I think he's going to make a play on this football. Might even intercept it. But either way, really impressive rep. Sometimes you lose reps, and it's still a really good one. All right, so press rep here opens up and bails, but this one is fine because he's in uh, trail technique. He's using trail. Every every other DB is using trail, so he does a good job. Doesn't look back at the quarterback. He's got the eye on the hip, and he plays to his leverage. We get a nice natural bracket here. Really good job. Really good job by Dial on that play. All right, so we got him at the top of the screen here. And again, this one, the feet are just a little all over the place. All right, the feet are a little all over the place. We can see, all right, too big of a read step. So I call that a false step. And then look at how his legs get crossed over like this, right? It just feels like he has two left feet sometimes. Uh, he's just got to work on that, you know. He's got to work on that. NFL receivers, it's not, it's going to look a lot worse than that. <laughs> so got him up here, top of the screen, press coverage. But again, right, so this is what you want to see. So you want to see the little flashes of it being good. And so, again, look at the feet. Nice little patient read step. Nice small read step. Stays within the frame. Patient. Hands. Gets that arm bar. And then what does he do? Cut off technique. Really good rep right there. Really good. So he can do it. It's just going to take some time. Again, we got the press bail rep. He's showing it too early. Don't love that. And so now ball's out here on the perimeter. We want to attack this stock block here. We want to attack this stock block and stay on it and squeeze this thing down. We've got a nice little situation here where we can cage this thing. But what does he do? He widens out here. Okay. And then he gives kind of gives his back to the receiver. And where does the ball hit? right where he was very lucky that the safety comes in here and makes this play because he just totally opened the alley opened a lane here for this back right good open field tackle by the safety got to do a better job on the perimeter against these stock blocks so we can see it here right here he's right on the numbers if he just hunkers down and gets hands on Pearsall here He's going to be in a good position to cut this thing off and then ensure that there is, you know, the, being the force player and ensuring that it gets back into the pursuit. But he widens and, man, if this safety was a step slower, look at this lane that ends up getting created. So got to do a better job out there on the perimeter. All right, we got him up top here. Nice, small, patient read step, but... Again, opens the hips, right? So got to be more patient here. The base is more narrow, right? So that's better. But he opens his hips. Don't want to do that. But again, he's in trail. Does a good job of keeping hands on the receiver and then finishes the rep on top of the route in phase. So I really like his recovery phase. I don't like how he starts the press reps, but I really love the recovery phase, the in phase, out of phase nature of the route and where you end up in the in the play. Like I think that's really good for him. Again, better read steps here. Look at the small read steps, but also opens the hips a little bit too much for my liking. Too early. But then when Pearsall sticks his foot in the ground, right? So we measure from right when that foot gets stuck in the ground. Look at how much separation he is. He's creates he gets way too over his skis here and it takes almost a second and a half for him to get back downhill that's by far the slowest time that we've uh, done during draft season all right so again the body control this is another another one that makes me go this guy safety safety okay so out and up rep here opens the hips Quick flip back, then sees that the route is turning into an out and up, gets hands on, punches all over it. Really impressive rep. I gotta I gotta just run that one time through just so you guys can see it, just to see the body control. The feet might not be there, but the hips and the body control are awesome. Boom. Bang. Really good rep right there. 
All right, now we got him at the bottom of the screen. Another press rep here. Okay, let's see. I lost my spot again. All right, so bottom of the screen here, press rep. All right, false step forward. Gets into a pedal. Don't really love that. If the receiver is going to attack you forward, you can get hands on to him because he doesn't stem his route. He's just giving him more space. But again, I love the recovery phase here. Gets on top of the receiver. But now, ball is underthrown. So you got to come up and through. We've talked about this on the channel. You got to come up and through with this hand and get your eyes snapped back to the ball when it's either a back shoulder or underthrown ball. Because if you face guard like this, they're going to throw the flag, okay? So they throw the flag because he's face guarding here. He needs to do a better job of feeling the tempo of the route and then see, okay, get your head and and get your head around and then come up and through with this hand. Come up and through because it's going to swing your body, your shoulders, your hips and all that into the body of the receiver. And that way, it's still pass interference, but I call it stealth pass interference. And referees never throw the flag when you do that. He just, you know, face guards the guy and then falls into him. Ref's always going to throw the flag in that situation. Got to get your head and your hips and your shoulders around. All right. So I got him at the bottom of the screen here. So this one, I really like this rep here because it's route recognition. He recognizes that it's mesh, so he doesn't chase, cuts the under, then flips back around and is in position to cover this route. So really good job on the route recognition piece of that play. So with this next one here, okay. So let's see at the start of the play. Again, the base gets really wide. So the, the left foot steps really far forward, and then the right foot steps really far out. So he ends up in a just like too wide of a base. And then the receiver is starting to get some separation here. Because of that, ball ends up being underthrown. So he does a good job of coming up and playing that ball in the air, and it ends up being an incompletion. So again, I really like the recovery phase for him. I really like him deep down the field the one nitpick i do have on this play is he goes up underhanded and plays it like a receiver i'd like to see him high point the football if he high points it he probably picks it off but either way really good recovery rep all right next play here so on this one he's just zoning off his area there's a ball in the flat. I like that he doesn't go out here and chase it because he's supposed to zone off his area. The ball is thrown. So I'm not, again, I only do it when the receiver sticks their foot in the ground. So I'm not measuring the speed on this one. But this ends up being a problem. Bad angle to the football. Totally whiffs on this open field tackle. This play was fourth and 11. Ugh, yikes. Big conversion for Florida. And we'll see it even better from this angle. So throws the ball out here, and we want to be eye through the thigh. The angle that you want to take at the, the ball carrier, the receiver here, you want to go eye through the thigh, and you can see the angle that he's taking is behind the receiver. It's out wide. You want to go right through this guy, eye through the thigh. So it's very easy for him to give him a move. Big conversion for Florida. All right, next one here, another press rep. Much better with the feet, okay? Much better, patient, read steps. So the first read step, patient, boom, gets hands on, knocks him into the other route. So much better, much better press rep right there. So it's up and down with the press technique stuff. All right, so another press rep here, again, wide steps here but i do like that he stays square right so but the problem that i do have with this one if we go back okay is when the receiver comes straight up to him 
look at how he gets into the staggered stance and then he's like leaning over okay he's leaning over and then that creates just a little bit of separation there you don't want to do that right you want to let the receiver come to you and then use those arms use those arms to lock him out and widen him so he leans forward again doesn't look bad there but if you do that against an nfl receiver it's not going to look very good All right, so much better on the perimeter with the stock blocks on this rep, okay? So, you know, he does show the numbers to the sideline a little bit, but when you see it from the tight angle, it's not that bad. It doesn't look as bad as it looks here. But either way, right, hunkers down and sets this edge and squeezes this thing, and then the ball carrier comes right to him, tackles him, Really good job. And you'll see it from the tight angle. It's much better. You'll see he doesn't fully show his numbers to the sideline. Look at that. See? Keeps his outside half free. This is really good. Keeps that outside half free. Hunkers down and sets the edge of the defense. Look, see? Numbers aren't showing to the sideline. He's nice and square here. Gets in here and makes a tackle. Really good job. Much better perimeter rep. All right. So this one. This goes back to what I talked about earlier with the balance issues. He's got some issues with his balance, okay? So we get the motion that way. I do like the physicality, right? He stumbles a little bit, so he gets physical with the receiver. And now the ball is coming out here to the flat. Receiver bobbles it because it's a bad pass. So he's in position where if he gets a good break, he can either try to attack this football, maybe break it up, or he's going to crush this guy. Or it could be an interception, right? But the balance comes into play here. His balance is not great. So we can see slips and stumbles and falls. Touchdown. Tough, tough rep here. We'll see it from the tight angle. In perfect position to make this play and just totally falls over. Easy touchdown for Florida. All right. So... All right, again, with the brakes, all right, we want to measure, put that foot in the ground, and then get back downhill. Takes over a second, but again, the recovery phase, what happens in the recovery phase, gets hands on, squeezes this guy to the sideline. Really good rep here. Quarterback has to throw the ball away. So the recovery speed is really good. So, you know, you hear about the breakfast corners and the dinner corners. This guy is absolutely a dinner corner. He's not going to win the rep early, but he will win it late. Again, the break on the slant. So this one is tougher, though, because he's in a half turn. So it's gonna, always going to be harder to break like that. And from a scheme perspective, I'm pretty sure he's supposed to be in a half turn here. But it does take him a little while to be able to break. I would love to see him explode to the football and make a play on this ball. Or at least like tackle this guy right when he catches it. Just too much rack here. Creates too much separation. That's a tough one though from a schematic standpoint. All right, last play here. So his feet again are a little all over the place on this one. All right, so it feels like he's got two left feet. But either way, physical. Squeezes him to the sideline but gets over his skis and the balance comes into play. All right, too much separation here, even though the ball is going that way. We want to be attached to our guy in man coverage. So, long video, right? A lot to talk through with Marcellus Dial. This is not the last Marcellus Dial video I'm going to do. I'm going to break him down against Drake May. The two of them squared off first game of the season. So, we're going to see two Patriots be able to go at it. So, I'll probably put that video out in the next few days. But my verdict on him, the grade that I gave him, I believe it was a 68.4. So not a great grade, um, but he's a developmental guy. I think that he can, you know, improve over time. It's just going to take some time. I don't see this guy beating out, you know, Jonathan Jones or Alex Austin or, you know, any or Marcus Jones or any of the other guys that they have there at the corner spot. But I do think as a free safety, 
he could be a really good player. I think that he's got some instinctive skills. He understands, you know, route distribution and stuff like that. His vertical reps look really good. And if you're the deep safety in the middle of the field, you're going to be a vertical guy. Like, I think that this dude could make the transition to free safety much faster than learning how to play corner in the NFL. But when we do the Drake May breakdown with him, he looked a lot better against North Carolina. But this team has better receivers. This is SEC competition. So you're going to want to come back and see that breakdown. So that will be probably the next video that I do. So as always, you know what it is. It's Coach Williams, Ballhawks. We fly. I'm out. Peace.